Hello everybody. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at a classical mechanics problem with the use of the Lagrangian. So I already did a video sort of talking about what the Lagrangian is and what the principle of least action is. So uh, essentially what we have is that uh, the Lagrangian is the ki kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So let's say T minus V. And I said that the principle of least action states that the integral of the Lagrangian with respect to generalized coordinates, so some generalized coordinate Q, is always minimized in, uh, in nature. So uh, we can find the kinetic energy and the uh, potential energy. So we can find the Lagrangian. And so we want to find out how we can minimize this curve. And so as it turns out, uh, we use something called the Euler-Lagrange equation, which states that the time derivative of the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to generalized speed is equal to um, the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to generalized position. And as it turns out, the some things cancel out, and so you will just get um, the kinetic energy in one of the partials and the uh, potential energy in the other. And so that uh, makes it nice. So we want to start out by uh, well, first, knowing what this problem is. So here we have a, a mass B uh, sliding down, and everything is frictionless, by the way, uh, sliding down an inclined plane with an angle theta. And this incline, inclined plane has some mass A. And the reason why the mass the inclined plane matters is because this inclined plane is also moving, uh, sliding around the ground. And again, that, that sliding is, is frictionless. So we're going to say it is x, uh, sort of its general position is x, and then it has velocity x dot and uh, acceleration x double dot. Similarly, we're going to let y be the distance of b from the top of the inclined plane, and the total length of the inclined plane is L. And there is gravi uh, gravitational acceleration equal to G. So basically, we want to f what we want to find is the acceleration of the block uh, down the incline. So what is Y? Y, um, y is acceleration with respect to time. Uh, and we can do this um, basically because with these generalized coordinates, right? So we have an x and a y here. So we get two equations, uh, one for x and one for y. Uh, these are called our, our equations of motion. Uh, and so this is the, the Euler-Lagrange formalism, and you can derive Newton's laws from it. Uh, so you get equations of motions, and, and you can solve them. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is is we're going to have some equation, your two equations, and we can solve for y to, uh, y second derivative. So enough talking. Let's start doing. So we know that the kinetic energy of something is one half mass times its velocity, right? And so for the for the wedge, um, or for the inclined plane, sorry. That ends up just being one half a times x dot squared, right? Um, because its speed is x dot and its mass is a. So, and and it's very similar for the block, right? So let's find. Uh, well, basically because the the block. The wedge is not changing in the y direction, so it's this is just an x velocity. Uh, but 
the, the mass has an x and y velocity. Um, and so we can see here it's going it's going down the inclined plane. It's also uh, going to the right. So let's find the coordinates of b. A b. Uh, so its x coordinate is obviously just uh, this length here plus this length here. So x and then this length here, as we can see by similar triangles, it will just be y cosine theta. So here we get y cosine theta, and um, oops, draw that better. And then the y coordinate is going to be um, basically, so it starts here. Um, so l say L sine theta minus Y um, sine theta. I think that makes sense. Yeah. So the, this is the coordinates of B, uh, the positions of V. And so we can find the velocity of b, so b dot, will just be x dot plus y dot cosine theta. And then here l sine theta is um, just constant, so we get y dot, oops, minus y dot sine theta. I differentiated theta there, but it's just a constant. Oof, my writing's off today. Uh, and so each of these terms squared times one half b, where b is the mass. Um, I know I was writing as position here, but we have one half b. Uh, so we have this term squared plus this term squared. And we notice that for both we're gonna have we're gonna have y dot times cosine theta, that's all squared. And then y dot times sine theta, that's all squared. So we get a cosine squared plus sine squared in there. Uh, so that just ends up being y dot sine squared. Uh, I mean y dot squared. Uh, and then we have x dot squared. And then we have these two multiplied together, n times 2. So 2x dot y dot cosine theta. So that is our kinetic energy. Our potential energy, um, well, that's pretty easy. Is just going to be m mgh, um, and so that's just going to be mg times uh, the y here. So let's see, m uh, m mg times L minus Y sine theta. And so these are our uh, kinetic energy and potential energy. So like I said, when we apply a principle of least action and then the Euler-Lagrange equation, some things cancel out. And so what we end up getting is the differential equation so we have a time derivative of partial with respect to of par partial of the kinetic energy with respect to uh, general speed is equal to the negative of the partial of uh, the potential with respect to general position. And so this, uh, ju just for a reference here, this almost looks like when we have a force and we say that the force is equal to the negative of the gradient of the potential energy. Uh, that's pretty much uh, what this is. So anyway, uh, and, and, and just to make this clear, when I say when I'm saying general position and general uh, velocity and whatnot, uh, so our coordinates here are x and y. We can represent everything in this problem in terms of x and y. So those are our general equ equations. So uh, we're going to have two of these for q is equal to x and for q is equal to y.
So let's uh, let's do that. So I'm actually going to skip the uh, sort of derivative calculations, uh, but I'll show all the work. Okay, so here I've calculated uh, the partials of everything, and then here for the kinetic energies, I calculate the time derivative of the of those. But really, all you're doing is adding just more dots. Um, so that's not hard. So here we see that uh, this term is equal to zero, so that's pretty nice. And this term is equal to just a constant. Um, so now we just want to solve for y prime by itself. And again, that's very nice with, with this being equal to zero and that we get negative do a oops, a plus b x dot x dot dot over b cosine theta. I hope you'll agree that this uh, actually let me sorry. Uh, so here we have x dot dot is equal to negative b y dot dot cosine theta over a plus b. That follows pretty easily from here. And then we can set this in here, uh, and we get, uh, so I'm writing down here, and I'm going to factor out, we can factor out a y prime. Oh, and uh, one thing here, every everywhere I put a little m, like for the potentials, uh, that's supposed to be a lower case b. Uh, so anyway, here I've factored out y, y dot dot and we have times b minus b squared cosine squared theta over a plus b. This is equal to b g sine theta. So what we could do is we could divide out by a b here. So we just get a one, which we can write as a plus b here, a plus b over a plus b minus this. Uh, and so we'll have a plus, and then we can factor out another b. We get b b times one minus cosine squared theta. So that's going to be b sine squared theta. And so we have a a plus b sine squared theta over a plus b, right? So we could just multiply the reciprocal on both sides, and we get that the derivative the acceleration is a plus b g sine theta all over a plus b sine squared theta. And so all in all, this is uh, the answer we are looking for. Um, so just uh, to point out here, this would be would have been a, a pain really to solve using normal Newtonian mechanics because you'd have to find forces on here and then you'd have really you have an arbitrary position of the wedge and then you have to count for the mass of the wedge. Thankfully, 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 there's no friction uh, that that helps simplify the problem a lot. Because really, this it isn't that bad once you lay down. Uh, sort of what the potential and kinetic have to be, and then you just uh, take some derivatives and you know s solve. Really, you're solving a linear uh, linear equation, t two two variables, two unknown or two equations, two unknowns. So it's not that hard once you get to that point, right? Because taking the derivatives isn't that hard either. Um, but that's sort of the power of Lagrangian mechanics as compared to normal Newtonian methods. So I uh, thank you for watching my video and I hope to see you in my other ones.